Hi everyone, it's Tasman here from Tasman's Crochet Creations and for today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to crochet these cute little Minecraft bees. So these Minecraft bees are an intermediate pattern um, just because it uses back post single crochet stitches so you need to know um, your basic crochet stitches um, and also do go a little bit fast in this video so yeah it's recommended to know your beginner stitches um, very well or your basic stitches very well um, but yeah so for today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to crochet these cute little Minecraft bees isn't it so cute so yeah these are my little take on the Minecraft bees um, I very very much love them I think they are just super cute and so adorable so yeah let's get on with the um, with the materials yeah. okay guys so <clears throat> in order to make um, our cute little minecraft bees um, these are the materials that we'll need. Um, apologies for this bee being so big. This was the second bee that I did. So my attention was like a bit loose here. This was the first bee that I did, um, which I think he's he's really, really cute, don't you think? So yeah, um, for these bees, this is what the top of the bees look like, by the way. Um, <clears throat> so they have like little square wings, a little square body, and um, some cube eyes as well, or square eyes, I should say. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, as for the materials, um, we'll be using Charity Weight Yarn. So, this is the yarn that I use. This is 100% um, acrylic. So, it's Charity Double Knit. And, um, as I said, it is 100% acrylic. It is 100 grams. It is approximately 233 meters or, or far, too, sorry, 256 yards. Um, it recommends a 4 millimeter crochet hook. And this is the color bright yellow. Okay, so as I said, we'll be using some bright yellow. We'll be using some white for the wings and for the eyes. And then we'll need some black for the stripes of the bee as well as for the eyes. And then you'll also be needing some stuffing, some polyfill, so that we can stuff our bee. Okay, so we're needing some, some of that. And with this pattern, I'll be using a 2mm crochet hook just to get um, my stitches nice and tight and small. Um, and you'll be also needing a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle with a large eye, as well as a stitch marker. So this is my cute little 3D printed uh, ball, ball of yarn and hook uh, stitch marker. I quite like this little guy. He's my favorite. <laughs> my brother actually 3D printed it for me. And I also had this little um, 3D printed keychain. Um, also 3D printed. Or this, <laughs> sorry, this ball of yarn and crochet hook keychain as well. 3D printed. So you get a stitch marker and a 3D, uh, and a keychain, sorry. So yeah, um, once my website is published, I will be selling both of these. I will be selling both of these on my website as well as other merch such as t-shirts and things like that when my website is live that will probably be only next year maybe because there's still a lot that I need to do <laughs> um yeah okay and you'll also be needing um, a keychain as well as a jump ring so we can attach the keychain to our little bee okay so I believe that is all the materials that we'll need. So let's get started with today's tutorial. Yeah. <clears throat> so to get started with our little bee, we are going to take our yellow yarn and then we will um, create a slip knot. Okay, so let me just show you how we are going to do that. Let me just zoom in. Okay, so you'll take your yarn, you'll wrap it around your fingers once Okay, you'll wrap it around your fingers once, twice, and then the third time you're going to go over, cross over, you're going to cross over, and at the back it should also look like that, 
and then you're going to insert your hook underneath the first loop and then pick up the second loop okay so you're going to pick up the second loop you're going to pick up the second loop you're going to pick up the second loop like that and then it should look something like that Okay, and then you're going to chain one to secure. So you're just going to chain one. So you'll chain one just to secure your magic ring. Then you can take it off your fingers. And then that is what it should be looking like there. Okay. And then what we will do is we will place eight single crochets into the magic ring. So to do a single crochet, you will insert into the magic ring then you'll yarn over so I like to yarn under because it creates um, a much more tighter stitch if you yarn under the normal way of doing a stitches is to yarn over where the yarn is over the hook but we are going to yarn under okay so you'll yarn under pull through you'll have two loops on your hook then you're going to yarn over and then you're going to pull, pull this loop through the two loops to do your single crochet. Okay. And then you will just do that seven more times. So we will insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through two. Again, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through two. So that's one, two, three. One, two, and three. Okay, let me maybe just zoom in a little bit more. That's three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Oops, you split my yarn there. Okay, let's do the last one again. Okay. So now after completing your, your eight single crochets, this is what it should be looking like. Okay, that is what it should be looking like. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to pull on this tail end. Okay, so we will pull on this tail end. We're going to pull it closed. And then you see that one loop is coming in. So you pull that one loop like that. That's what it looks like there. You pull in the one loop and then this is what you're left with. And then you'll pull your tail end, tighten uh, this other loop. Okay, so you'll pull on this other tail end to tighten up that loop. Okay, and there we go. Okay, so now that is what it should be looking like now. The eight single crochets into the magic ring, that is what it should be looking like. Okay, and then we will put place one single crochet into the, sorry, we'll place, we'll place three single crochets into the first stitch. Okay, so we will insert in that first into that first stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through two. And then we can put our stitch marker in so we can grab our stitch marker. And we can put our stitch marker into the first stitch that we did. Okay, so you can, okay. And then we'll put two more uh, single crochets into the first stitch. Okay, like that so as you see there we should have three stitches there and then we'll place one single crochet into the next stitch and then three single crochets into the next stitch okay then we place three single crochets into the next stitch and then one single crochet
then one single crochet, and then three single crochet. Okay. And by the end of this round, our stitch count should have gone from 8 to 16. So the first round, after you've done your 8 single crochets, you should have 8. And then at, by the end of this round, we should have 16. Okay, so it's one single crochet into the next stitch. Okay, so it's one single crochet into the next stitch. And then it is three single crochets into the next stitch. So the three single crochets is our corner stitches. So that is what is going to make our B um, cubed or squared, um, which is the three single crochets into the corners. And then for our last stitch, we're just going to place one single crochet into the last stitch. Okay, so that is what um, it should be looking like. So then we can remove our stitch marker. So you can remove our stitch marker. And then in the next stitch, we're going to place one single crochet into the next stitch. And then we can place our stitch marker back. Okay, and then it is three single crochets into the next stitch. So in the, the middle stitch of the three, that is our corner stitch. So we need to put three single crochets in there. Okay, so that's what it looks like now. And we'll just repeat that around. So we will, so we, sorry, we'll actually put one single crochet into the next three stitches. So it's one two three so one single crochet into the next three stitches okay and then we'll place three single crochets into that next corner stitch there so that's one two and three okay and then again it is one two three and then we'll place an increase into the corner most stitch and then again one single crochet into the next three stitches oops me so one single crochet into the next three one two and three and then an, and then three single crochets into the next stitch and then we should be left with two single crochets left so one two we have two single crochets left and um, by the end of this round we should have a total of 24 stitches so you, you need to make sure that you count your stitches so that your stitch count is correct okay so if we look here now if we had to remove our stitch marker if we had to remove our stitch marker we would have placed one single crochet in that first stitch and then we finished off with two single crochets so we have technically have three single crochets along this edge so we have three single crochets in the middle and then an increase for this round and that is kind of like the way we will increase in a in like a square shaped manner so we went from eight single crochets to one single crochet then three single crochets now it's three single three single crochets then three single crochets in the corner then our next round we'll have five single crochets and then three single crochets for the increase Okay, so let's do that now. So again, by the end of this round, you should have 24 stitches. And a way to count your stitches is if you look at this V, that's how you'll count your stitches, is the top of those stitches, which is the V. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. 
Okay, so now moving on to the next round, we are going to place one single crochets into the next two stitches so that that's one single crochet in the first stitch. Then we can replace our stitch marker. Then we can replace our stitch marker. And then we can place one single crochet into the next stitch and then an increase in the next which is three single crochet increase okay so that's what it should be looking like and then we will place one single crochet into the next five stitches so that's one two three four and five and then three single crochets into the corner okay so that is what the one edge looks like okay so again we will just repeat this around placing one single crochet into the next five stitches so that's one two three four five and then three single crochets into the corner stitch okay and then again one single crochet into the next five one two three four and five and then we'll do an increase again in the corner stitch, which is an, an increase as three single crochets. That's one, two, and three stitches all in the same stitch. Okay, and then in the remaining three stitches, we'll place one single crochet in each of those three stitches. So it's one, two, and three. So one single crochet into the next three stitches. Yeah, and again we're back at the beginning and again with the two single single crochets in the beginning of the round and the three single crochets at the end makes up for those five single crochets okay so now we can slip stitch to the beginning stitch we can remove our stitch marker and then to slip stitch we will insert and then what i like to do is i like to twist my work down i like to twist my work down and then yarn over and then pull through both of those loops like that okay and then there is our um front of our b done so now what we will do is we would chain one which does not count as a stitch okay it does not count as a stitch so then what we will do now is we will do back post single crochets around all of these stitches to create the box like shape of the bee. So to do that we will take our hook insert it from behind so we will insert it from from the stitch behind so we will go underneath this chain one and then insert your hook into the next stitch through the front like that and then you're going to yarn over pull through you'll have two loops on your hook and yarn over and pull through two to finish off your single crochet so as you can see as you can see the the stitch is around this post this first stitch it is around that first stitch Okay, so we're going to try that again. We will insert through the back post. We will insert through the same stitch we came out of previously. So if you remember, we, we inserted through the back, through the front, from back to front like this, and then out the other side like that for the first stitch. We will do the same thing, but we will insert through the stitch we came out of previously. And then ins insert your hook into the next stitch like that. OK, 
Okay, so let's try that again. So we'll insert our hook from back to front of the next stitch and then from front to back of that next stitch just after that. You're going to yarn over and pull through and yarn over and pull through too. Again, you're going to insert your hook from the back to the front of that stitch you just came out of and then through the next stitch like that. Then you're going to yarn over pull through then you're going to yarn over and pull through those two to finish off your single crochet again you're going to insert from front from back to front of that next stitch and then from front to back of that next stitch so you see you're just catching a back loop of the stitch you're going to yarn over and pull through yarn over and pull through two and you'll just repeat that all the way around doing one back post single crochet in each stitch around and your total stitch count should be 32 stitches so by the end of the last round it should have 32 stitches i forgot to point that out <laughs> okay so again you're going to insert from back to front of that stitch we just finished and then from front to back of the next stitch yarn over pull through yarn over and pull through two Again, insert from back to front of that stitch you just came out of, and then from front to back of the next stitch, yarn over and pull through, and yarn over and pull through two. Okay, so again, let's insert through um, the back to the front of that next stitch, and then from the front to back of that next stitch, like that. I'm going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through two. So you can repeat that all the way around and then I'll meet back up with you when we're ready to join at the end of this round. And your stitch count should remain the same as 32 stitches. Okay. Okay, so I'm coming back round to the beginning again and I'm just going to do my last two stitches. So that's one. And then when doing this last stitch, we'll go into the last stitch from, from back to front and then we'll go into the next stitch through this the slip stitch here or the first stitch here so I'll show you that real quickly so we will insert from the back to front of that last stitch and then we'll insert our hook into that first stitch um, that we that we single crocheted into and then yarn over pull through and then yarn over and pull through two to finish off your single crochet so it can be a little bit confusing and a little bit tricky of which what which stitch is your last stitch but once you do this a, a handful of times you will get the hang of it okay so we just need to confirm our stitch count so i'm just going to count quickly so we should have a total of 32 stitches by the end of this round so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty seven 28, 29, 30, 31, and 32. Okay, so we have 32 stitches. And then what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch to the beginning. So we're going to insert, yarn over, and then twist your work down and pull this yarn through those two loops through the stitch and the loop on your hook. Let me do that again. So you'll insert, you're going to yarn over and pull this loop through the stitch and the loop on your hook like that okay so there's your slip stitch so that's just the way that I like to do my slip stitch I find that it's easier to do it that way okay so now moving on to the next round sorry for the next two rounds so for the next two rounds for round six to seven we will chain one which does not count as a stitch and we will just place one single crochet in each stitch around until the beginning we will keep the same stitch count as 32 because we will just be placing one single crochet in each stitch around without increasing or decreasing okay so you'll just do another two rounds of just one single crochet in each stitch around ok 
Yeah, and your stitch count should have remained the same stitch count as 32. So you can carry on and um, I'll come back with you once we have seven rounds completed. So two additional rounds of yellow. So this one and then the next round. Okay, so we'll meet back up with you when we are at the beginning again. Okay. Okay, so I'm back at the beginning of the first round and I just wanted to just point out here because we are now slip stitching to join instead of working in a continuous spiral like what we did for the front um, it will look like that we have like one extra stitch here but that is in fact our slip stitch and then there is our chain one just next to that so just be careful of this stitch here it may look like an extra stitch but it is in fact just a slip stitch so this is my last stitch here so we will skip this slip stitch, we'll skip this slip stitch and then insert our hook into the first single crochet stitch, yarn over and pull that through those two loops. Okay, so now you can see it is starting to become a little bit of a box shape. Okay, so um, let me actually just show you that slip stitch again. Yeah, so I just finished off my single crochet and I'm going to slip stitch. So normally what you would do to slip stitch, you'd yarn over, pull through that stitch, and then pull this loop through this loop. So you'll pull this loop through that loop on your hook to do a slip stitch. But the way I like to do a slip stitch is you'd insert into the stitch, then you'd yarn over, or yarn under, yarn over. <laughs> so you'll yarn, o yarn, yarn over, and then we'll twist our work down and pull... Um, I will yarn through the stitch and the loop on our hook and then you'll chain one and then you will do round seven which is just one single crochet and each stitch around and then I'll come back with you come back and then I'll show you how we will color change to black to do the straps okay okay so now I'm back at the beginning after completing my two additional rounds so we can count our rounds, so that's one, two, three, four, and then five is the slip stitch round, and then, sorry, not slip stitch, back post round, and then six, and then seven. Okay, so I'm back at the beginning, and again, it looks like we have um, an additional stitch there, but we don't, that is our slip stitch. So we will slip stitch to the beginning of the stitch, so we will yarn over, twist our work down, and then pull the yarn through the whoopsie through the stitch and the loop on the hook okay so that is what it should be looking like now now we can take our scissors you can snip off our yellow you can snip off our yellow then we can pull this up Okay, and then we can put our yellow to the side for now. And then we can grab our black. Okay, so we'll grab our black. And then we'll insert our hook into the same stitch that we slip stitched into. Place the black over our hook. And then we're going to yarn over. So we're going to hold our... We're going to hold our um, yarn that we're going to attach with our fingers at the back of the work like this. Then we're going to yarn over... Pull that through the stitch and then we're going to chain one with the black to secure it in place. And then we will place one single crochet into each stitch round for the next two rounds. So we will have two rounds of the black, two rounds of the yellow and two rounds of the black again. And then two rounds of the yellow and then we will finish off the back of the B. Okay, so we're going to place one single crochet into the same stitch that we joined. Gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through too. Okay, and then I like to just drop my stitches into the B. We are not gonna work over them, just gonna go straight into the next stitch and continue with our single crochets, placing one single crochet into each stitch around for the next two rounds. And our stitch count would have remained the same as 32 stitches. Okay, so you will continue placing one single crochet 
into each stitch around for the next two rounds with slip stitching to the beginning stitch. And the chain ones at the beginning of each round, it does not count as a stitch, it just acts as leverage. Okay, so we will again just place one single crochet in each stitch around for the next two rounds. So we'll have two rounds in black by the end of this. Okay, so I'll meet back up with you when we are at the beginning and have completed the next two rounds, which is from round eight to nine. Okay. Okay, so now I'm back at the beginning after completing two rounds in black and I am ready to now slip stitch to the beginning stitch. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to find our first stitch. We're going to find our first stitch and then we're going to yarn over, pull through and then pull through the loop on a hook. Let me show that to you again. So we'll insert, we're going to yarn over and then pull through those two stitches. So that's stitch in the loop on our hook. Okay, so that is what our bee should be looking like now. So what we're going to do is we're going to snip our yarn again. So we're going to take our scissors, snip the black, and then pull up. And then we are going to grab our yellow once again. We're going to grab our yellow. And then we'll insert our hook through the stitch um, that we slip stitched into, which is this one here. We are going to... Lay our yarn on top of our hook. We're going to hold our tail ends. Then we're going to yarn over and pull the yellow through. Then we're going to chain one to secure. And then we are going to continue placing one single crochet in each stitch around for the next two rounds. So we'll insert our hook into the first stitch that we joined. We're going to yarn over, pull through. And then yarn over and pull through two to do your single crochet and then just tug on your tail ends so that our stitches can tighten up okay so again you're just going to drop your tail ends inside the bee we are not going to crochet over them we're just going to go straight into the next stitch and continue single crocheting so for rounds 10 through to 11 uh, we will do two rounds in yellow with no increasing or no decreasing our stitch counts would remain the same with 32 single crochets okay so you'll just continue to single crochet in each stitch around for the next two rounds okay and then i'll meet back up with you when we are ready to end off the yellow and join the black again okay Okay, so now I've made it back around to the beginning of my yellow, so I've done two rounds in total with yellow. So now I'm going to again just slip stitch to the beginning stitch, so I'm going to yarn over, pull through, so we're going to yarn over and pull through this that first stitch and the loop on our hook. Okay, so now we are going to end off our yellow, so we're going to take our yellow yarn, so not a, not a yellow yellow yarn. We're going to take our scissors and you're going to snip our yellow and pull that up. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put our yellow one side and then we are going to grab our black again. Then we're going to insert our hook into the stitch that we slip stitched into. Then we're going to place our yarn over our hook. We're going to hold on to our tail ends with our fingers. Going to yarn over and pull that through. Then we're going to chain one to secure to secure our our tail ends. Okay, and then we're going to carry on crocheting and placing one single crochet into each stitch around until we have until we have two rounds in total of the black. So we'll be working from round 12 to 13 with black. So we'll just do what we have been doing. So we'll do 
two single crochets, uh, sorry, two rounds of black with one single crochet in each stitch around for the next two rounds. And our stitch count should have remained the same as 32 stitches. Okay. Alright, so you can continue with that and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to join and then do the yellow again. Cat, okay, so you can go off and you can do the two rounds in black and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to end with the black and join the yellow. Okay, so I'm back at the beginning again of my black and I'm just going to slip stitch the beginning. So insert my hook yarn over and pull through that stitch and the loop on my hook to do my slip stitch okay and then we can grab our scissors and then we can snip off our black pull that up we can we can drop our we can drop our black and then we can grab our yellow then again insert our hook where we slip stitched into grab our yellow yarn Hold it down our tail ends with our fingers. I'm going to yarn over and pull through and then do a chain one to secure. Okay. And then for the next two rounds, we're going to place one single crochet into each stitch around, keeping the same stitch count of 32. Okay. So we're just going to place one single crochet in each stitch around. For the next two rounds so from four rounds 14 to 15. okay and then i'll come back and then i'll show you what we are going to do um to square off our b again okay so you can go off and continue doing your two rounds in yellow and then i'll show you what to do from there okay And your stitch count should have remained the same stitch count as 32 for those next two rounds. Okay. Okay. So now I am back at the beginning and I am ready to slip stitch. So I've crocheted my last stitch and now I'm just going to slip stitch to that beginning. Single crochet here that is the beginning. Going to yarn over, pull through that first stitch and then pull through that loop on your hook. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to chain one. And we are now going to do um, one back post single crochet again through every stitch around. So again, a back post is you're going to insert from the back to front, from back to front of that first stitch. And then you're going to go over to that next stitch and insert from front to back. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through. Then you're going to yarn over and Pull through two to finish off your single crochet. Again, you're going to go through this next stitch. You're going to insert from back to front. And then you're going to go over to that next stitch and insert from front to back. Like that. And then you're going to yarn over and pull through. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through those two loops to finish off your single crochet. So again, you're going to insert from back to front into that next stitch. And then go over the next stitch from front to back. Yarn over, pull through, then yarn over and pull through two. Okay, like that. And then you'll just repeat that all the way around, inserting to the next stitch back to front. Whoopsie. Inserting to the next stitch from back to front, and then insert into the next stitch, and then finish off your single crochet. Okay, so you'll keep on doing this all the way around doing your back post single crochet okay so you'll just repeat this all the way around until you get back around to the beginning and again your stitch count would remain the same of 32 stitches okay so there's, there would be no increasing or no decreasing. Decreasing, you would just place one back post single crochet around each stitch. 
around. Okay, so you can repeat this all the way around, then I'll meet back up with you when we are ready to join at the beginning again. Okay. Okay, so now I'm back round to the beginning again, and now I'm going to do my last um, back post single crochet. So I'm going to insert into that last stitch and then insert my hook. So I'm going to insert from back to front into that last stitch and then insert from front to back of my first single crochet that I did. And then we are going to single crochet, well, finish off that single crochet. We're going to yarn over and pull through those two. We are going to place one single crochet. Okay, so actually by the end of this round, we should have, we should have kept the same stitch count as 32. All right, so now moving on to the next round, we're going to place one single crochet to the next three. So we're going to place one single crochet into the first stitch. Then we're going to take our stitch marker and place our stitch marker back into, into the first stitch that we did. And then we're going to place one single crochet into the next two stitches, one and two. And then we will decrease the next three stitches together. So there is the next three stitches there. So what we will do is we will insert underneath the front loop of the next stitch, twist your hook down, and then insert into the front loop of the next stitch, and then twist your hook down and insert into the front loop of the next stitch. So you should have three loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through those three loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over, pull through those two loops to finish off your single crochet. Okay. And then we are again going to place one single crochet into the next five stitches. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. And then we will decrease the next three stitches together again. So go underneath the front loop of the next stitch, twist your hook down, and then insert into the front loop of that next stitch, twist your hook down, and insert into the front loop of that next stitch. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through those three loops. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through two to finish off your single crochet stitch. Okay, and you will just repeat that. All the way around placing one single crochet into the next five stitches one two three four and five and then you'll do your threes three decrease together so you'll insert underneath the front loop of the next stitch twist your hook down and insert into the front loop of the next stitch twist your hook down and insert into the front loop of that next stitch then you're going to yarn over Pull through those three loops, then you're going to yarn over and pull through two. Okay. Then again, you're going to place one single crochet into the next five. One, two, three, four, and five. See? And five. Okay. And then we will. We will three single crochet the next two stitches together so we'll decrease the next three stitches together so we'll go underneath the the next stitch twist your hook down insert into the front loop of the next stitch twist your hook down and insert into the front loop of that next stitch then you're going to yarn over and pull through those three loops then you're going to yarn over and pull through two to finish off your single crochet okay and then you'll have two stitches remaining in which we'll place one single crochet into each of those two stitches. Okay, and then we will remove our stitch marker. Okay, and then into the next stitch. Sorry, and by the end of this round, our stitch count should have gone down from 32 down to 24. By the end of this round okay so now moving on to the next round um we will now place one single crochet into the next two stitches so that's one place our stitch marker back 
whoopsie, one kit and then one single crochet in the next stitch. So that will be two stitches. Let's do that again. One single crochet into the next stitch. So that'll be two. And then we'll decrease the next three stitches together. So again, underneath the front loop of the next stitch, twist your hook down underneath the front loop of the next stitch, twist your hook down, insert your hook underneath the front loop of the next stitch. You're going to yarn over and pull through those three loops. You're going to yarn over and pull through two to finish off your single crochet. And then you're going to place one single crochet into the next three stitches. One, two, and three. And then we'll do our three single crochet decrease together. So going underneath those next three front loops, yarn over and pull through two to finish off your decrease. Your decrease. Okay, and then again we'll place one single crochet into the next three stitches. So that's one. two, three, and then we'll decrease the next three stitches together. Okay, that's one, two, and three. And then we'll do one single crochet in the next three again. Then we'll decrease the next three stitches together. One, two, and three. And then we have one, one single crochet left, so you'll place one single crochet into that last stitch. Okay. And then I think now we can stuff our B. Okay, so I think we should stuff our B so we can pull up a loop a little bit. Okay, then we can grab some of our stuffing. Uh, oh, and I forgot to mention that you'll also be needing a blunt pair of scissors so that you can push down your stuffing. So this is my blunt pair of scissors um, just to push down the stuffing. So I'm just going to hold my stuffing over the hole and then just push down with the scissors into the bee. Let me just put a little bit more in here. Oopsie. Okay. There we go. I think he's looking quite good so far. Okay, I don't want to add too much stuffing because I don't really want to make him a fat bee. He must be a cubed bee. So I don't want to add too much stuffing. I think I'm going to add maybe just a little bit more, just a little bit more to the top, to the body of the bee. Okay, there we go. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to continue crocheting um, my bee. And then maybe towards the end, I'll just stuff it a little bit more. Okay, 
yeah all right so moving on to the next round so we will place one single crochet into the first stitch and then we'll place our stitch marker back and then three single crochet decrease together so going under the front loop front loops of the next three stitches and then do your single crochet over the next three double crochets together okay and then you're going to place one single crochet and then going under the next three going underneath the front loops of the next three stitches we're going to do a decrease and then again one single crochet okay and by the end of this round we should have eight stitches by the end of this round okay then again we're going to decrease the next three stitches together going underneath the front loops of the next three stitches yarn over pull through those three and then yarn over and pull through those two stitches okay and again one single crochet into the next stitch and then a decrease one two three Okay, so there we go. That is the end of our B. Okay, so I've removed my stitch marker and we should have eight stitches by the end of that round. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, we have eight. Okay, so now we're going to slip stitch. So we're going to go underneath that first stitch. You're going to yarn over, pull through. So we're going to yarn, insert, yarn over, pull through, and then pull through that loop on your hook to finish off your slip stitch. And then you're going to leave quite a bit of a tail for sewing. Snip that off. And then you're going to pull up. Okay, there we go. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to stuff my B just a little bit more because I feel like he's uh, a little bit understuffed. So I'm just going to place my stuffing on top and then just push, push down with my scissors. Just push some stuffing in here. Oopsie. I don't want to overstuff him. I don't want to make make him look like a fat bee. He must be cubed or square shaped. Okay. So I think that is okay. I think. Yeah, so I think that is okay. So, okay, so after I've ended off, I'm going to take my tapestry needle and thread my tapestry needle. And then what we are going to do is we are going to go under the front loops of each of these stitches. So going through the front loop of each of these stitches.
Okay, so after you've sewn um, under all of the front loops of those stitches, then you can just pull that tight. Okay, so you can just pull that tight. Okay, so you can just pull that tight. And then I like to just go into the center of that and then come out somewhere else in the body. And then go into this, the stitch that you came out of and then out somewhere else on the body. Go into that stitch and then come out somewhere else on the body. Come on, there we go. So again, just insert into the stitch that you came out of and then out somewhere else on the body. Okay, so I think he looks all right. Okay, so that's what he looks like. Yeah, so you just want to sew in your tail end just a little bit more. Again, just inserting your needle through the stitch you came out of and out somewhere else. Inserting your needle to, into the same stitch you came out of and out somewhere else with the B. Insert your needle to the same stitch you came out of and out somewhere else with the B. Insert your needle to the one that's the same stitch you came out of and out somewhere else with the B. You just want to do this a few times just to sec just to secure your tail end. Yeah, there we go and then once you're done you can just snip your tail end close to the body okay and then there we go there is the body of our bee isn't it cute and a nice little cubed cube shaped bee okay so now it is on to doing the wings so let's do the wings we can put our body off to the side then we can grab our white or blue yarn. Sorry, we'll need our white yarn, not white or blue. We'll need our white yarn. And then what we are going to do is we are going to, again, create a slip knot. Um, sorry, a magic ring. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap our yarn around our fingers once, twice, and then the third time we're going to cross over to form an X. And you're going to insert underneath those first two loops and you're going to yarn over and pull through those two loops then you're going to do one uh then you're going to do a chain so you're just going to yarn over and pull through just to secure that magic ring and then what we are going to do is we are just going to place eight single crochets into the magic ring okay so that's one two three four five six seven and eight okay there we go there's our eight single crochets so it's one two three four five six seven and eight okay then we're going to pull on our tail yarn our tail end sorry and then we're going to take this one that has pulled in, we're going to take that out and pull on that down towards you and then that other loop should close in and then we'll take our tail end and pull that down to get rid of that other loop 
Yeah, and then same as how we did with the body of the bee, we are going to place three single crochets into that first stitch. And then we're going to place our stitch marker. We're going to place our stitch marker into that first stitch that we made and then insert our hook back in our working loop. And then we're going to place two more single crochets into that first stitch. So we should have three single crochets into that first stitch and then one single crochet into the next stitch and then three single crochets into the next stitch. And then one single crochet in the next stitch and then three single crochets into the next stitch. So we are essentially just repeating what we did for the body but we are only doing three rounds so that our wings can be smaller than the body. Okay, so again it's three single crochets into the corner stitch or into the next stitch and then one single crochet for the last stitch. Okay, and then your stitch count should have gone up from eight, um, eight up to 16. From eight up to 16. Okay, and then we will remove our stitch marker again. Okay, so we will remove our stitch marker. And then we will place one single crochet into the first stitch. Okay, so we'll place one single crochet into the first stitch. And then into... The next stitch we'll do three single crochets into the next stitch i need to put my stitch marker back before i forget <laughs> okay so you're going to insert your stitch marker back into the first stitch first stitch that we did here we go and then three single crochets into the next stitch and then we'll place one single crochet into the next three stitches that's one, two, and three, and then an increase or three single crochets into the next stitch. One, two, three, and then replace one single crochet into the next three stitches. So that's one, two, and three. Okay. Okay, and then again we'll place three single crochets into the next stitch. And then we'll place one single crochet into the next three stitches. And our stitch count by the end of this round should have gone up from 16 to 24. And then we'll place one single crochet into the remaining two stitches. Okay, so now that's what it looks like now with the wings. So we can remove our stitch marker. And then what we can do is we can slip stitch into the next stitch. So you're going to insert, yarn over, pull through, and then pull through the loop on your hook to do your slip stitch. Okay. And now we can end off this wing so you will leave a bit of a tail for sewing. And then cut your tail in and then yarn over and pull that through. And there you go. There's our little wing. And um, you'll, you'll need to make two of these, and then um, we can go on and uh, sew these onto the bee. Okay, so I'll meet back up with you when we are ready to sew the wings onto the bee. Okay, so I've now come back and I have finished crocheting both of my wings, and I've left um, a tail on both so that I can sew them in. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to snip off this tail end because I worked over it. 
So I've worked over my tail end, so I don't have to sew it in anymore. Okay, so now there's our little wings. So I'm going to grab the body of the bee now. So I'm going to grab the body of the bee, and I'm going to grab my darning needle. So let me just maybe zoom out just a little bit here. Okay, so what we're going to do is, I don't know if you can see there, that there's that like little lip, that little bump over there. So that'll be the bottom of the bee. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our one of our wings. We're going to thread our darning needle with the tail end of, from our wings. And then what we're going to do, just before we start sewing the wing onto the bee, I'm just going to insert my needle into the same stitch that I slip stitched into and then pull that a little bit tight and then flip our work to the back and then just sew under uh, just sew under these next two or three stitches just so that we can get our needle to the corner of the wing. Yeah, I'm not sure what this is here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> a little bit confused there with that little loop there. Okay, so I've crocheted to the corner and then I'm just going to insert my hook, sorry, my needle into the middle of those three single crochets in the corner. And then there we go. Now our wing is, is ready to be sewn on. Okay, so we can grab our wing. So again, with this little bump at the bottom of the bee. We are going to place the bee sort of just a little bit off from the wing and um, I would like I would like there to be a two stitch gap between uh, between the wings so something like that okay so I think where my wing is placed now so you just want to cover your wing should just cover like half of the bee, the edge of the bee, like if that makes any sense. Like it should, the wing should come off like just half of the bee, if that makes any sense. Okay, so you just want to place it there. And then what we are going to do is we are now just going to sew the wing on. So I'm going to insert my needle into the stitch just below the wing and then come out of the next stitch. And then sew up into a stitch of the wing. Come on now, you little thing. There we go. And then down, and then insert your needle down into the next stitch of the wing. And then insert your needle into the next stitch on the body. Still going in line, so there is where I want to sew. So we're going to go here to there and then again sew into the wing so into the wing and then sew into the next stitch of the wing and then sew down into the next stitch of the B and come out on the next stitch. And then again sew up into the wing. And then go into the next stitch of the wing. Yeah. And then sew down into the stitch that you came out of and then out the next stitch of the B. And making sure that we are still keeping everything in line and then you're just going to insert your needle back into the wing and then go into the next stitch of the wing i think it's the corner stitch now and then insert into the the next the the last stitch that we went into the b see where that is coming out of so you'll insert your needle there and then come out of the bee just underneath the wing just like one or two rows down so let's go to two rows away from the wing or two stitches away from the ring I should wing I should say okay there so that's what it looks like 
care. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to catch some of this wing. So I'm just going to sew under some of these stitches here, like that, and then sew down into this stitch. You see this is coming out of, uh, this yarn is coming out of this stitch, so I'll go into that stitch just opposite it. And then insert your needle and come out somewhere else on the body. And there we go. That thing should be a little bit tight now. Okay. So you can just pull on this a little bit tight. And then that should keep that wing down. And then I'm just going to sew in my tail end just a little bit. So I'm going to insert my needle out somewhere else on the body. Insert my needle into the same stitch I came out of. And then out somewhere else on the body. Insert my needle, come out somewhere else on the body. Okay. Insert my needle to one stitch and come out on another stitch. Like that. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to insert my needle into the same stitch I came out of. And then I'm just going to go up to the stitch here where this is coming out here. And I'm just going to tack the side of the wing in place again. Because I don't like how that is, how the wing is showing through like that. Okay, so I'm just going to sew in my tail end again. So I'm just going to insert my needle through the stitch I came out of and add somewhere else on the B. And I think I'm just going to tack this wing again because it seems to be coming undone as well just a little bit so again i'm just going to tack sew in the same place and then sew down to the b in the same place as well and then just pull that a little bit just pull it down and then sew this in place so i'm just going to insert my needle into the stitch i came out of and then add somewhere else on the b and then insert my needle through the stitch I came out of, and then out somewhere else on the B. And then just do this a few more times. Insert my needle uh, into the stitch I came out of, and out somewhere else. Insert my needle into the stitch I came out of, and then out somewhere else. Okay. I think we're going to do it one more time. Okay, there we go. I think that is sewn in enough. Okay, so I'm just going to take my scissors and then just snip off this tail end. Like that. And then we'll take our other... Um, our other wing and we'll do the same thing so we'll thread our darning needle and then again with uh with this wing we'll sew into the same stitch we slip stitched into and then go to the back of the wing and then we will just sew under three stitches like that Okay, so then our tail end is at the corner, and then I'm just going to um, sew into the stitch into the corner there, so my yarn is at the top of the wing. And then we're going to grab our B, and then we are now going to place our wing uh, two stitches away from... Two stitches away, so here we go, so this is two stitches away. Um, so two stitches away, we are going to sew the wing onto the B. Okay, so I think just for the purpose of this B, because I actually see now that I actually sewed it a little bit more over than what I wanted it to be. So... 
I'm going to leave three um, I think I'm going to leave maybe four four stitches in between So I'm just going to sew down into the B and then up into the wing and then sew over into the next stitch of the wing and then down into the next stitch of the B. And sew up into the wing. Okay, so sew up into the wing and then sew down into the next stitch of the wing and then sew down into the next stitch of the B and then sew into the next stitch of the wing. Oops. Okay, and then sew into the next stitch of the wing. And then sew down into the next stitch of the B. Okay. See how these rings are a little bit more art than the other one, but that's okay. It's still a Minecraft B at the end of the day, isn't it? Okay, so I'm just going to sew into the corner stitch of the wing. And then down into the wing again and then I'm just going to come out this other side and then just tack the side down again so I'm just going to insert my needle into that corner most stitch and sew down into that stitch and then I'm just going to come out two rows sorry two stitches away and then sew up into the wing and then go directly opposite of that stitch that we came out of and then come out somewhere else on the body and then just pull that a bit tight just to secure that wing our little minecraft bee um, all we need to do now is just crochet the r's and then sew the r's on okay so let's do the r's <laughs> okay so in order to do the r's we are going to grab our black yarn we're going to grab our black yarn and then we're going to create the slip knots we're going to take our yarn wrap it around our finger once and then twice you're going to cross over the second time go under the first loop pick up the second loop and then you're going to take your slip knot off your fingers you're going to grab your tail end and you're working on and pull that tight okay and then we're going to chain three so you're going to yarn over pull through yarn over pull through that's two yarn over pull through three yarn over pull through and four okay so now we have four chains and we're going to turn our work uh, to the other side so we're going to turn our work to the other side and then we are going to turn our work to the back bumps of the chain here and then we're going to insert our hook under that first back bump 
and then we're going to do a single crochet insert into the next back bump of the chain yarn over pull through and then do your single crochet again do your single crochet into that last chain okay so we should have three stitches by the end of that row then we will chain one turn our work and then place one single crochet into the next three stitches Okay, yeah, so there we go. That is all our little hour is going to be. It's just a little black rectangular piece. And then again, we're just going to leave a little bit of a tail end, snip that off. Then we're going to yarn over and pull that through and pull up. Okay, yeah, there you go. So you can just go off and make your second one exactly like this. And then I'll come back and I'll show you how we'll sew the hours on and then how to add the little white or blue little speck for the hours. Okay. Okay, so now I'm back and I've completed both of the little squares for the R's. So we can bring in our little B. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we are going to grab our tail end. And then we're going to thread our darning needle. Okay, and then we will place the R sort of like, like that. Okay, so it's to the side and, yeah, so it's like to the side, so it's in line, so the top of it is like in line with like the top of the second round of the B. So I'm just going to insert my needle into the B and then come out of the next stitch of the B and then insert my hook, my needle into the next stitch of the R and then insert my needle into the next stitch of the R. And then go over the next stitch of the B. And like over here, I think. I don't know. And then insert my needle into the corner of the R. And then into the, into the next stitch down the side of the R. And then sew into the next stitch of the B. And then insert your needle into the next stitch of the R. And then into the next stitch of the R. And then insert into the next stitch of the B. And then come out into the next stitch. And then we're going to insert into that corner stitch of the R. And then into that next stitch of the R. And then down into the next stitch of the B. And then into that corner stitch of the R. Let's see, I need to re-thread my darning needle here. And then sew into the next stitch of the R. And then into the next stitch of the B. And then sew into the next stitch of the R. And into the next stitch of the B. Into the R and then into the next stitch of the R and then down into the B. Okay, so let me just see how I like that. So, yeah, I think that looks okay. Yeah, I think that looks okay. Okay, so I'm just going to sew in my tail end. So, I'm just going to insert my needle into the stitch you came out of and then out somewhere else. 
Sewed my needle into the same stitch I came out of and out somewhere else. And sewed your needle into the same stitch you came out of and then out somewhere else on the B. And sewed your needle into the same stitch you came out of and then out somewhere else on the B. And sewed your needle into the same stitch you came out of and out somewhere else on the B. And you just want to keep repeating this until you feel happy with the amount of times that you've sewn in your tail end. And then we can just trim off this tail end. And then what we can do is with this other short one, we can feed our tail end on here and then we can just sew down into the body of the bee. Okay, maybe I'm gonna sew down into another stitch of the bee. And then I'm just going to do the same. I'm just going to feed my yarn in and out of my bee, like what I have been doing. Okay. Yeah, so that's what it looks like. Okay, so now the only thing that's left to do now is just to sew on the other eye and then we can embroider um, the little white or the blue on the arm and then just add the keychain. So yeah. Okay, so let's sew. Okay, so let's sew up the, let's sew on this next arm. Oopsie. So we will do exactly as what we have been doing. So we will just place our R over there and kind of sew it in line with um with the other R. So I just insert and sew so like this two, like this whole center round is in between the R's. Turn okay, and sew back up into the R and then sew down into the, the next stitch of the R. And then insert your needle into the next stitch of the B and the R and of the next stitch. And then insert your needle into the core stitch of the R. Okay, so I think 
actually do try and slide this off a little bit further. And then again, you'll just take the tail end from the other, from the beginning part of your eye, and then just sew down into the B, and then come out of a stitch over the B. Yeah, and then insert your needle into the same stitch you came out of, and then out somewhere else on the B. Insert your needle into the same stitch you came out of, and then out somewhere else on the B. Search your needle into the same stitch you came out of and out somewhere else on the bee. Okay. And then once you're happy with the way your bee looks, we can go and snip our tail ends short. So there we go, there's our little bee, now the only thing left to do, shame my little bee's eyes are, are not straight, unfortunately. <laughs> So after we have finished with that, you can grab some of your watts or a little bit of light blue yarn. Um, so you don't want too much, but also not too little. So just maybe about like 30 centimeters in length. And then what we're going to do is we're going to insert our darning needle. Okay, and then we're going to insert our needle into um, a stitch on the body. And come out somewhere else, and then we're just gonna sew in our tail end just a little bit here. Okay, so just going in and out of the bee, just sewing in my tail end just a little bit. So then what we're going to do is we're just going to sew up into the top left corner of the eye here. And then we are just going to sew into the stitch on the black on the R. Come on now. Okay. 
Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll just catch the black. Yeah, so we'll just sew a couple lines on the top left hand corner of the right R. Okay, let me just thread up my needle again. And then insert your needle into the the right of the left eye, if that makes any sense. Okay, there we go. And then what we're going to do is we are just going to sew down like one stitch of the eye. And then we're just going to sew just three or four times catching that like one stitch until we are like happy with the way it looks yeah I think that is fine so yeah I think that is okay Yeah, so I think that is Now the only thing left to do is just add our keychain. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so there is our little bee. Our little Minecraft bee. He does look a little bit fat, doesn't he? There we go. So there's our little Minecraft bee. And now the only thing we need to do now is just put the keychain on. So we can get our keychain, our little jump ring, and our jewelry pliers. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our jump ring. And then um, I like to insert this jump ring between these two stitches in the middle. One, two, three. So like somewhat in the middle of the B. And you just want to poke it down into the middlemost stitch of the B. And then just put your chain, your keychain on like that. And then just push the jump ring closed. Like that. And there we go. There is our little Minecraft B. This one is a little bit oddly shaped for some odd reason. Um, but yeah, um, I think this bee came out all right, despite the fact that his wings are sewed on a little bit <laughs> further away than I anticipated. Um, but yeah, I think that looks okay. I think that is fine. So yeah, there's our little Minecraft bee and then all of his little friends. Let me just bring all of them out here, why don't I? <laughs> okay, there's all of the little Minecraft bee friends. Okay, look at that. Cute little things, eh? I think my first one is still my favourite one that I did. My stitches, my tension was a lot more tighter and 
all of that. So I think he, he looked much better, my first one, compared to these two. Now this one, my second one that I did, is slightly bigger than my first one. If you can see there, it looks slightly fatter. And my tension is loose for this one. And then this one, I don't know what happened. This one that I did on camera. <laughs> it's a little bit funny. The wings are a little bit further apart than, I, than what I wanted. And um, yeah, the eyes, just, it's just so now and a bit of an angle. Um, it's weird because when I tried to sew one stitch over, like it didn't sit right. Um, but yeah, anyway, that is that for this tutorial. Yeah, all of the Minecraft friends sitting here. We can bring our flowers out because there's bees around. Okay, I need to get them to sit nicely. Okay. So there you go everyone. There is the tutorial for the Minecraft bee. I hope you guys really enjoyed watching um how to learn how to crochet this cute little Minecraft bee. Okay guys, that is it for the end of this tutorial. Um, I really hope you enjoyed watching how to crochet this cute little Minecraft bee. Um, I really hope you enjoyed learning how to crochet it. And yeah, I hope you had lots of fun learning how to crochet these cute little bees. I think they're just so adorable. And um, yeah, I really, really hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. It really goes a long way. And uh, yeah, better check out my channel because I have quite a few of these awesome keychains. And um, yeah, there'll be another version of our sunflower keychain coming out. Um, I'll just give you a little glimpse of what it looks like. Da, 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 da. So that is what our newer version of the sunflower looks like. Um, this is what our old version of the sunflower looked like. This one here, and this one is the new one. So I quite like the new one a lot more. And also changed up the sunflower pattern, the petals a little bit. Um, with this pattern, I chained three at the beginning and end of every petal, and this one I chained four. So these petals become a lot more flatter, per se. Um, but yeah, so uh, this tutorial for this sunflower keychain will be coming out soon. Um, so yeah, again, thank you guys so much for watching on how to crochet my cute little Minecraft bee. I hope you really enjoyed watching how to crochet this cute little bee. And, um, yeah, again, like, comment, and subscribe. And, um, yeah, happy crocheting, guys.